Now, most people will contradict me when I say this, but despite appearances, I am not a cat person. Yes, it's true, I am the owner of four cats. We have three outdoor barn cats that everybody knows about in Pablo, Ginny, and Molly barn cat. But the barn cat that not everybody knows about is Lil Barn Cat, who you guys see sleeping right here in my office. And the reason you guys don't usually see her is because she is a retired barn cat. And I think that the story of how she ended up becoming a retired barn cat is actually the reason why most people think that I'm a cat person. And this video is that story. Of course, it's going to probably take me a little while to tell this story. So I'm bringing down a stool. I'm getting comfortable and it's time to buckle in. As a kid, I was never a cat person. I didn't like cats. The animal of choice for me was always going to be dogs. I had lots of dogs growing up, but a big part of the reason why I wasn't a huge fan of cats was because I'm allergic to cats. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Whenever I touch and pet a cat, I need to immediately wash my hands. Because if I touch my face, which I will inevitably do at some point in this video, I'll start hacking and sneezing and coughing and my eyes will turn red and I probably need to take a Benadryl to make everything calm down. And so while that is a legit reason not to like cats, I think that there were also some personality based reasons as to why I didn't like cats either. Dogs are friendly, dogs rely on people heavily, cats are very independent, cats always want to do their own thing. And I think that that animal nature always kind of turned me off to the personality of cats as well. But because our farm is a poultry farm, I always knew that when this farm started, we were gonna need to have barn cats. Poultry has poultry feed, that poultry feed gets spilled, that spilled feed attracts rodents, those rodents bring predators, those rodents also bring disease and property destruction. Having barn cats on the farm was gonna be necessary to balance out and control that rodent population. And so back in February of 2018, before I even moved up to the farm, we adopted Pablo Barncat. My wife was living up at the farm alone at that point, and I wanted her to have a companion, and the two of them just bonded so completely that Pablo Barncat to this day remains my wife Allison's most favorite creature on the planet, present company included. And so we had the one barn cat living on the farm when I moved up to the farm back in May of 2018. But at that time, at a town about 25 miles away from our farm, there was a litter of kittens being born. Aww. Some friends of ours by the names of Nick and Zia, they had adopted a cat who had just given birth to a litter of kittens. You know, much like Allison and me, Nick and Zia had moved up here to Vermont and they were just getting settled and they were living in this rental house and there was like a house next door to the rental house and inside that house next door, there were like all of these feral cats living. And in particular, they found this one feral cat who they had named Big Edie. And it turned out that Big Edie was actually pregnant and she gave birth to a litter of kittens. And I know for Nick and Zia, being able to have that litter of kittens was like just such a great experience. You know, I'm a firm believer in if you have outdoor cats, they should always be spayed and neutered because sometimes you have situations like the one that Big Yee was having where you have these unwanted cat pregnancies. Well, at Nick and Zia's place, these kittens thrive. They grew up healthy. Mama Big Edie was an excellent caretaker and eventually Nick and Zia realized that they needed to give away those kittens. You know, there were five kittens in total and Nick and Zia decided that they wanted to keep two of the kittens, but they had to find homes for three other ones. And so shortly after moving up here and starting a new job here in Vermont, I got a text from my wife Allison at work asking if it was okay if we got a kitten. And to be quite honest, I was not excited about that prospect. You know, I accepted the idea of having Pablo Barncat on the farm because I thought it was necessary. I didn't think at the time that we needed two barn cats. And then to top it all off, the idea of having a kitten on the farm meant we couldn't just turn it loose and set it outside. We would have to take a few months to train it and make sure it was okay and make sure it wasn't too small that it can get eaten by an animal. And, and so I honestly really was against this idea of having some sort of new kitten here on the farm. But when my wife Allison wants something, she can oftentimes be a little bit relentless. And we agreed to adopt one of the kittens. 
And so basically what happened is in June, when the kittens reached eight weeks of age and they were fully weaned from their mother, Nick packaged Lil Barn Cat up and brought her over to our farm. I remember it very distinctly because Nick had to work that morning and he worked doing Sunday brunch at the kitchen of a restaurant. So he had to get there really early, like, I don't know, like six o'clock in the morning. And he had to drive by the farm to get to his job. And so he stopped right before work and showed up and I had just woken up and was getting ready to go outside and do chores. And there really weren't that many chores to do at that time because we didn't even have ducks yet. And so I became the first person to greet this tiny little ball of fluff. I remember it so distinctly taking like a little piece of straw that just happened to be sitting on the floor of the mud room and playing with Lil with it. And like, she would like try to bat at it with her little kitten paws. And she was just so playful, but also a little bit scared. I don't know what it was, but it was in those first few minutes of sitting alone with her in our mudroom that my heart melted and I found a place of love for this little kitten here. And to be quite honest, that whole experience was kind of bizarre to me because I mean, I was not expecting to like a kitten at all. I was not expecting to really enjoy her presence. I was like annoyed that Allison even asked to get the kitten. But there I was, a guy who was not a cat person, training a little barn cat. Yeah, you remember those times too, huh? And so the summer of 2018 flew by on our farm. You know, we got our first ducks. We experienced a lot of things on that farm. And one of the things that was happening all in the background is that little barn cat was getting bigger and growing up. And even though we were keeping her in a crate to keep her safe at night, I would start letting her out full time in the day by herself. And then eventually by the fall of 2018, she became a full fledged barn cat. What I'm gonna be doing here is removing your belt. That way if you need to hide. You won't have a horribly obvious jingle jangle going on. All right. With your bell now removed, Lil Barn Cat, you are now no longer a Padawan learner. You are a full fledged Barn Cat. Go forth and be a Barn Cat. All right, good night, you guys. Be good. And Lil Barn Cat and Pablo Barn Cat just did absolutely phenomenal together as a team. Pablo really had been established as the older cat and he was much bigger and so he was the dominant one but he really took Lil under his wing and he was really supportive and almost protective of her. We would often find the two of them grooming each other and it was absolutely adorable. And watching Lil grow up, it was great. You know, she would follow me around like a farm dog. It seemed like Allison had her barn cat and Pablo barn cat, and I had my barn cat and Lil barn cat. In the life of having a barn cat that you love, living outdoors full time can have its stresses. Like I remember there was one night when after Lil was released in the fall and she could go outside, that I was woken up in the middle of the night to the sound of a cat shrieking, and I sprinted downstairs and ran outside to see what was going on, only to find Pablo Barncat waiting for me right by the door and Lil Barncat missing. And, you know, it was like three o'clock in the morning and I spent the whole night looking for her and didn't find her until she ended up showing up later on that next morning. Things like that can really put stress on your heart, but you also have to recognize that these cats have a job and that they're living their best life and that sometimes you need to just accept it and work within those constraints. What is that? Oh, I see what's going on up there. Do you see that? I see why that bird is terrorized. Careful, Lil. Don't hurt yourself, sweetie. Let it go, let it go. But then in the summer of 2020, something happened that absolutely changed everything with barn cats and little barn cats specifically. So yesterday I was out here working on the chicken tractor, getting ready to house our teenage goslings in this giant, giant structure I've been building. And it was just like a perfect summer morning. All of a sudden I noticed a car pull up here in the driveway and it was one of my neighbor's cars. But as I got outside and looked at him and he looked at me, dead away and just 
with a shake of his head said, I think I hit one of your cats. And there was nothing there. There was no cat, there was no blood, there was nothing. Allison and I ran around here looking for little barn cat. First we searched around here, then we searched up by the barn and through the barn and all of her usual spots to hide. Then we scoured every inch of ground up and down this strip. We were looking through here and we couldn't find anything. And it just makes me so sad. And come dinner time, there was no sign of her either. By nighttime, there was no sign of her. And now here I am the next day. You know, when you open your heart up to another living creature, whether it's person or animal, you know that there's always the inevitability of loss. You know that we are all mortal, and you know that there are things that could take you away, or take the ones that you love away, in a split second. I remember going out there and recording that video and my heart was absolutely broken because I was certain deep down that she was gone. That tiny little barn cat that was only about two years old, her little life cut way too short. But of course that was when the most miraculous thing ever happened and the little barn cat came back to me. Just as we were getting ready to go to bed around 10 o'clock, Allison went downstairs to go fill up her water bottle and she screamed and yelled for me to come downstairs. I was in bed, reading a book, ready for lights out, but I sprung out of bed, sprinted downstairs, and there, sitting on the porch, was Pablo Barncat. And he was looking out at the driveway, and right in the middle of the driveway was Lil Barncat! And she was alive, and she was sitting there, and, and she was hunched up, and she looked miserable and hurt, but she was alive! I immediately scooped her up, Allison and I hopped into my truck, and we immediately drove straight to the nearest emergency vet. I remember very distinctly driving and worrying that things were not gonna be okay and that I'd just momentarily gotten my hopes up because this was a cat that we had found that was on the verge of death. We got her to the emergency vet, they examined her and they found that she had some significant major problems. The x-rays indicated that she had a shattered pelvis, her blood levels were indicating that she had some significant internal injuries, and the vet said that there was not much that their vet clinic could do. And the only vet that could help us was this vet that was actually all the way out in Burlington, which is like the entire other side of the state from our farm, and that would be the only place that we could take her to potentially save her life. The vet that we took Lil Barncat to was the Burlington Emergency Medical Specialists, I think? No, the Burlington Emergency Veterinary Specialists, that's what it is, yeah, BEVS. And they took a look at her and they said, yes, she has a shattered pelvis, she has a ruptured bladder, that ruptured bladder is leading to all sorts of weird things with her protein levels and her kidneys and her blood's becoming toxic. And they said that they were gonna need to perform surgery immediately. They gave us a rough estimate of what all of this could cost. And without even thinking about the cost or if I could even afford to do it, I just said yes. You know, when I talked to my wife Allison about the story and what had happened to Lil, she always points to a very key moment that when we were driving to that first emergency vet, and Allison was holding her in her arms and I was driving my truck. I reached my hand over to Lil and Lil took her little tiny paw and put it on my hand, just almost kind of like this. And when Allison saw that, she said that she knew immediately that I was gonna do whatever it take to save this kitten's life. And so Lil went into her first surgery and they did some incredible work, particularly the surgeon who worked on her throughout. He, I mean, I am so indebted to this guy. He is an incredible surgeon. They had that first surgery, which stabled the stuff with her blood toxins and her bladder and repaired her and did all of that stuff. The folks at Bebs were so amazing that they like actually would even FaceTime me with Lil so I could see her in the hospital and talk to her while she was in the hospital. Hey Lil, how you doing sweetie? Aw, you look so groggy. Aw. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, aw, oh, man. I'm so happy to just even see her there. You are a fighter, sweetheart. I love you. Hang in there. Keep being strong. And I don't know what it was, but there was like something extremely cathartic about having that experience. You know, also talking to my wife about the experience after the fact, I remember her very much pushing me to FaceTime Lil. I kind of remember thinking it was really stupid. And I remember asking my wife why she pushed so hard for me to FaceTime a cat. 
and she said because she wasn't sure that Lil was gonna make it, and she wanted to make sure I had a chance to say goodbye if I needed to. I mean, it was so true. Lil was at death's door, and we weren't even quite sure if she was gonna make it through that first surgery. And so I just very much recognize now how lucky we were that she did. She spent, I don't know, about nine days, eight days in recovery after that first surgery. And then we had to go in and do a second surgery on her. That second surgery was for repairing her pelvis. When you look at the x-rays, right, which is what you're looking at right here, look at that screw. That thing means some serious business. And even to this day, when I pet her, I can still feel the bump from where all the repair stuff happened. She doesn't quite feel like a normal cat in that area. Despite being run over by a car, and then being missing for a good long while, Lil Barncat was going to survive. But we now had to deal with the aftermath. Okay, Lil, you're home. It's okay, sweetie. I know, it was a long ride. You're back home. Aww. Stay, 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 stay. I've gotta be very gentle with you. There we go. My poor baby. You've got no trousers on. Here you go. And as she was going through her recovery process, she was gonna need to stay inside a crate. She was gonna need to get medicine three or four times a day. You just hold her. You just hold her. Okay, here, you're okay. I'm gonna get bitten. Sorry, girl. Hey, hey. Good girl. You're doing good, Lillian. You're doing really, really good, honey. She had to be on movement restriction where she could not jump or run or play for about three months. And so that effectively meant that our outdoor barn cat now had to become an indoor cat. And I had always sworn that I was never going to let these outdoor barn cats become indoor cats. I mean, don't forget, I do have a cat allergy. And I was very much afraid of what having an indoor cat would do to my health and my allergies and whether or not it was something I could even survive with. But the other dilemma I had to deal with was the financial one. You know, two major kitty surgeries with a top kitty surgeon, as well as a 13 day stay and an emergency medical facility for cats. That type of stuff ain't cheap. And at the time our farm and YouTube channel and other things were not nearly as successful. Like the medical bill tally that Lil Barn had had racked up in the span of about two weeks was roughly $16,000. So yes, I could have bought a brand new low end car at the time for the price that I ended up paying for the medical bills of a barn cat. And you know, I wonder why people say that I'm a fake farm. But quite honestly, that's when I had my George Bailey moment. Much like George is inundated with money from the townspeople to help save the building and loan and keep George out of jail. Cards and envelopes just started to stream into the farm and they all had money or checks. Payments just started showing up through our PayPal. And much like I always seem to start crying when George hears that bell ring at the very end of the film and he reads the inscription from Clarence. That's right. I don't like Clarence. Whenever I think about that moment and the generosity of you folks and how you helped us save Lil Barncat, I always get just a bit teary-eyed when I think about that moment too. To think that so many people actually care about us and the animals on our farm and what happens here and they would do that. I, I, it... <laughs> Nobody likes to cry, baby. So of course, now I had this dilemma. We had a recovering cat who was gonna survive, but because of her injuries, we were pretty certain that she would never ever be an outdoor barn cat again. Between all of the climbing and physical activity that it usually required, which would hinder her recovery, as well as the fact that we felt like she was now even more vulnerable to a wild animal. Plus the fact that the cat costs more than a freaking car. Allison and I both agreed to convert this wild outdoor barn cat into a house cat, even despite my cat allergy. And while I thought the process was daunting, it turned out to be rather simple and easy because Lil Barn Cat took to house life much like one of our ducks would take to water. I tried to exercise her and keep her stimulated with toys. We kept her nails trimmed and gave her scratching posts to avoid having her destroy the house, even though she was a cat who had never been house trained. And she absolutely loved either sleeping in my office or by the fireplace. 
Now, the one dilemma though I know some folks are probably wondering about are my allergies and how do I even handle doing this? Sometimes I get comments on social media from folks telling me that I'm faking and that I don't really have a cat allergy. But for folks who've watched our live streams and seen me have a cat attack, the struggle is real. I'm not gonna lie to you guys and say that those first couple of months weren't very difficult where I would have constant sneezing fits, I felt like I could barely breathe. I was probably taking Benadryl on almost a nightly basis. But eventually, things kind of evened out, and I developed somewhat of a cat tolerance. And to be very clear, I don't want to be trying to traffic in medical myths, because I am not a doctor or any sort of medical person. But my theory has always been, much like somebody who's getting allergy shots from an allergist, where they're getting tiny little bits of ongoing exposure on a regular basis and their body develops an immunity to that allergy. I think having tiny bits of ongoing exposure from Lil Barncat when she first moved into the house helped break me from my allergy. I tried other things, like I know there's special pet foods that are supposed to help reduce the dander. They really didn't make a difference for me personally. We've also been very diligent about vacuuming and brushing Lil, and I think that helps keep her dander down. And then, like I said before, anytime I pet or touch Lil Barn Cat, I always wash my hands before trying to touch my face. Or I will end up with the snuggly wooglies, as my wife likes to call it. And so yes, I now find myself in a position where I have this little critter as my constant companion inside my office. Ever since I moved in here a few weeks ago, she's really taken to this space. And yes, it probably helped that I bought her this fancy cat tree. But overall, this has become her favorite place to hang out which I really do love. But whether I'm editing videos like this one for you guys for the internet, or I'm putting the finishing touches on my new novel about my livestock guardian dog, Toby. Available this fall! Lil Barn Cat is my constant companion. And much like the other barn cats and the livestock guardian dogs make my life on the farm a lot less lonely, Lil is my constant companion indoors. When I put my book out this fall, it's actually gonna be something that we're self-publishing. And to do that, I had to create a publishing company and that publishing company is called Lillian Books. And in case you're ever wondering, Lil for Lil Barn Cat is actually short for Lillian. And I just feel incredibly lucky and grateful to have this tiny little kitten alive and well on the farm today. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to learn more about our barn cats, watch that playlist up there or that video down there.